start a little bit before five just so I can get time for everybody to come in. No fifth color today, it's too cold. London is having a spell of freezing and snow, although I don't see any of that from my window right now. It was fairly cold outside and let's see. Nah, actually not that cold. The winter garden quote unquote. It says it's eight degrees right now, so yeah, could be worse. moment for a bunch of people to show up Today's plan is to go back to the unpaper tests that are currently a pretty much great mess of stuff um, using C and DVD, well, FFmpeg to read the images and compare them, which is not the greatest, I will say. Um, overall, fairly awful test setup that they wrote for it um, to improve on the previous one which was essentially the yeah run through this and make sure that it does exactly the thing that it should be doing so the plan is to rewrite that to use pytest um, and wire it in in meson so pytest and meson should be working well together since we already reached the point of like yeah, we need Python for Mason. May as well use Python for testing as well. Because why not? And you may notice this time around, and I'll show in a moment what I'm talking about, a little bit of a difference on the image. And no, it's not sponsored content because, as always, there is no sponsoring. This is just me spending some time doing open source stuff and I may as well do it in public for the stuff that doesn't include any private information or any work information the latter being slightly harder to achieve at times because let me go on a bit of a rant on that one there is a lot of stuff that happens on github on all the bubbles and that's clear by the fact that all of the bubbles end up releasing a bunch of stuff on GitHub, right? Um, but also means that when I'm looking at my own GitHub, I cannot do that on, on, on live stream most of the time because I don't know if I'm seeing internal issues at times. And so I'm like, I am not going to do that on live stream. It's handy to have a unique identity to deal with GitHub. But the fact that I share the same identity for my personal stuff and I use the same identity for my previous employer and for the current employer makes things annoyingly complicated. Um, and splitting the identities is just as annoyingly complicated because if you want to release your own stuff, you can do that on the account that is connected with identities. So. That is, by the way, one of the reasons why I decided to split as much as possible stuff into separate organizations. Well, it's 5 p.m. Let's get started on this one. So, as I was saying, there is a little bit of a difference from last time on this stream because I decided to add an avatar because, yeah, I'm... I'm I don't find it particularly useful to have a webcam pointing at me while I'm doing this kind of coding because honestly nobody needs to see my face while I'm coding I'm not comfortable doing that uh, I've done something like that because of work since now we are all away from offices but 
I, I don't really work very well under that kind of it's not pressure but it's just like I don't work but well under that so instead I decided to keep this avatar which is a um, commission that my wife gave me for my birthday and it's from Tam Dandy an awesome artist who you can see here on Instagram and does humanized versions of various Pokemons and they are all beautiful um, and this is of course a variant of, of course it's a variant of Luxio so and uh, as I was saying about identities yeah I cannot click on it because this one is not logged in but you can see a number of things from Tam Tandy and his Instagram is Tam Tandy Draw and I'll send the link I'll add the link to this later on actually I'll send one over on the chat as well because why not um, and if anybody feels like following him please do because just a standing work um, I, I really really like it um, my wife gave me this for my birthday last year and it was the best gift ever because yeah that, that's me as looks it admittedly the pandemic has had me grow my hair a little <laughs> a lot longer than it is right now um, but never mind that for now because that's not useful right now so where were we last time yes Maison can build our our um, our unpaper and can build the man page for unpaper as well and now it's time to add unit tests and they're not quite unit tests they're integration tests like well, are they? They are tests. I'm not sure if the unit test is the right answer to this one. Um, there are a number of different ways to do this and you can the, have a suite built by Maison directly which is kind of more similar to what um, I had before. Yes, it supports the Valgrind and all that kind of stuff. I don't think any of that right now is going to be very useful to me um, because these are not really unit tests like these are like build the whole thing and run it they can run in parallel but honestly all of these they are all completely independent they're not even threads they're just run and check what's going to happen uh, so my plan is to essentially just do all of these by running this uh, spy test. Now to run this as spy test, there are ways around it. So I'm the first, what's spy test? Well, spy test is this. Spy test is a whole test suite um, with parameterized tests and markers and all kind of stuff, and it's it's complicated. Um, but fine, like. It isn't really much to um, to add to that, but the good thing about that is that it allows the configuring and testing stuff and reading it based on certain paths and the directories. I'm going to start with this because it's going to be the easiest part to do. Uh, it does have the ability to inject outputs in various different ways but for the most part environment variables seems to be the way to do this so I'll start with that because that way I can test it completely unrelated to the build system and then figure out how to wire it in the build system and even if it means rewriting part of it later like one thing at a time um, like I did look around and there are ways to pass parameters and yes I removed the default edge starting screen because I don't really need to see random news from the UK. Um, there are ways to do that, not to parameterize, but actually adding the argument. Yeah, there is no reason for me to do this. So I'm not going to do it this way. Um, I will be able to set up stuff if needed, but for now, let's just. Let's just start with something simple. So, 
Oh yeah, and the other thing is I need to be low. So let me get this below. I don't want dark team. I have said this before, but I'll repeat it again because yeah, and it has been this has been the case a couple of times, people asking me. Yes, I do use non-dark mode. If I read something on a dark background, my eyes get tired, like seriously tired. Um, to the point that if I try to look at anything else afterwards, I just cannot see. My, my, my eyes just see the dark blotch. I can't do that. Like, I haven't been able to do this for the past 10 years, I want to say, maybe more. So yeah, I use light background everywhere. And like I need forced dark modes annoy me. You have no idea. Like OBS right now behind me is dark and I'm like, yeah, no. And if there was a way to switch, but like we may be able to get me to pay for Streamlabs Prime just to get a white team if I use the option, but I haven't bothered with that. So um, Pillow. So Pillow is a Python library that allows you to read images. Um, and there is an image file, and there is a module, and there is an image module. And this doesn't have any compare or stuff, but that's fine. That's, I don't need any of that right now. Image QT image, I should be fairly easy. Should be being the keyword. I haven't tried to do any of this. I'm doing this live, right? So let me close everything again. So um, what's my git status? Perfect, I committed everything last time. The tests are this mess over here, there is this compare image here. But literally, the, okay, so the way, maybe I should whiteboard this. Let me start the whiteboard um, and let me see if the whiteboarding mode works because it failed on me a couple of times. Do, 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 do. Yeah, it's still not working. Give me a second. I had no idea how people actually manage to do this because I've yeah if that's the right one okay it's not working give me just a second Okay, now it's working. It didn't capture the right window. I don't know why. Okay, now it's working. So, get the window out of the way. There we go. And I'll take the pen. Do I have my pen? Um, anyway, I'll, I'll talk through it while I'm trying to figure out how to do this. The way the tests are currently handled, there is a single C binary that compares two images and just says how many pixels are different between the two images, which is oh, here's open. Um, which is not the greatest of the options. Let's put it this way. Um, but it works around the issue that I had before of uh, different CPUs make slightly differences in um, single digit, single precision floating points and then things get a bit of a mess. So you have one test binary. Um, like generated binary, so binary on paper. which is our binary under test. And it has a set of inputs. And like there are multiple of these, so let me... This, does this work nowadays? It doesn't. And 
each one of these uh, generates an output and then these two are taken together is it me or did they change the way that part worked well um, but it looks like they did we made the, the, the drawing going blue and then black anyway so this thing up is packaged and passed on to the compare image that then gives you the test result and this thing over here is actually the test command line because each test has a different set of parameters so let, let me show you what I mean this is the compare image um, file which is essentially just a go and take that image when open one file, open the other file there is a lot of other codec settings here that is just getting stuff into it um, and then it fetches the frame which is basically just the one image and then it checks if the image okay there is also golden I guess I should have drawn the golden eh, never mind for now uh, but yeah, it takes the, the golden and the result, and if the golden doesn't match, if the height of the golden or the width of the golden doesn't match to so the dimension of the golden and the result don't match, it's a straight out error. Um, if the format of the two images doesn't match, it's a straight out error because it should have preserved that. Um, and if not, it goes and looks how many bytes change while going through each one of them. Bytes, not even pixel, because yeah, I couldn't be bothered to actually do the coding for one bit per pixel images. So all of that should be easier to rewrite in pillow to be less nonsensical. But let me try. Um, I, I can guarantee it will work right away. Um, so this is the compare image. These are all the golden images and you can see they are PPMs with licenses. And the source images, which are PNGs with licenses. And then we have these run tests. Like the run tests are the actual test command line. So if you look at run test A1, it has a name, A1 single page template layout, black and white full processing. And then it just runs the thing. And it fails if the image doesn't get generated and it tries to compare the two images and if it doesn't work, something is wrong. So let's start with that. Like very basic thing. If I want tests to run, I need a new test and I'm going to call this one test.py and I will start very basic like I'm, I'm going to do it like I was going to do something for work or like same level of junkiness and quality um, because it's always a trade-off between the two uh, and I'm going to start very slowly and that because I also have no idea what I'm doing about this so let's start. First, I want to be able to use below to load the image. So there is an image file. And I can open the image and I can parse the image. Parse the image, piece, file, but oh, okay. okay. I don't think I need that. Do I need that? Oh. Start with browsing then. Okay, so. Parses an image. This one is reading one kilobyte at a time. I don't think I want that. Um, I don't need a format decoder. I really want the base one. So, it's an image file, yes. Uh, a list of tile descriptors. I don't need tile descriptors, do I? Um, Not the tile list. I don't really need a tile list. Do I need a tile list? I don't need a tile list. So 
So what's a parser? What's a thing that parses the incremental image parser? I don't need an incremental image parser. I can really just read the whole thing at once because I don't care for that one. List of tiles is good too. Okay, maybe it's not image file that I want. Let me try the image image thingy. How about you go? Build image open, split file, in file. Um, care about the format and then it gives me something that I can use the format for and then I can apply a function which is probably not what I want pa, 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 register open I don't need any of that the image class where you go and okay let's let's slowly start through this back to coding so Import oh, offset on the keyboard. Import peel. No peel this clip. Peel. Do I have a virtual environment for this yet? I don't. Do I? Yes, could build your. No, I don't. Alright. Clip install user. Three seven. Okay, I'm on three seven. Uh, okay, left. Okay, images. Images. Import cut clip. Um, then we are going to have golden cut clip top up. Actually, I'm going to do this with keyboard only, yes, I can do this on 3.7. Keyboard only, so that it's unlikely to get the wrong thing over. And golden path, link the path, and result. And then this is going to return a boolean. Mm. Really? Mm. No, this is going to return a float. Um, what I want to return is. Well, let me start. Compare. It's loaded from the. Returns a shot of pixels. That's what I would like. I'm going to return the same thing that is in compare. So if I look at compare image right now, this that the person diff. And if a person diff is higher than the allowed difference, which comes from the command line. Did I screw this up? I did, didn't I? The allowed difference is 0 0.1. And percent diff is multiplied by 100. So, but 0.1% rather than 10% maybe I was intending to do that I'm not even sure anymore okay never mind future everybody like just remember to leave yourself some notes um, on what's going on there like I, I don't remember if I was supposed to have this hundred or Zero or oh, one. Hi Luke. <laughs> okay, then next time I will try to announce it straight on uh, on chat as well. The chat using IRC Cloud. You'll have to tell me how to do that. Later. Although I haven't logged into IRC Cloud in forever. 
Um, yeah, I'm bad with things like that. I also used to have Discord on my laptop and Discord started crashing on my laptop, so I just uninstalled it. I need to reinstall it, but I cannot be bothered. Anyway, so this will return the ratio of different pixels, and this time I'm explicitly going to call it a ratio, so I don't mix myself up with percentages or anything. So what's the path flip path? And I actually don't know if it also supports a path flip path, but I'll try. So um, golden image field image dot open golden and result image field dot image dot open golden not oh, golden result. <laughs> uh yeah, and then I will raise this and I'm going to raise this as Actually, no, I don't need to do that. Um, I can just return infinite if the two images have different sizes. Uh, and I won't probably to import login. In, mm, import login. Logger. Get, uh, get the child. And then now I have an image. Now image will have width and height in this. Let's reduce, no? Where is size, no? Yes, image width. Actually, it has a tuple of, uh, a true tuple of ints of size, which makes the comparison so much cleaner. I love Python when it works well. So if golden image dot size different result image dot size logger dot error images image image sizes dot match golden And let's go to image of size. Result. Result image of size. Return. Result image. Now that's the first part. And now I need to go and figure out every single pixel. But give me the from byte, from buffer. Okay, I need to get um Yeah, it's return a pick it's Better way to switch between images. Um, it's get pixel. And that should be fairly easy because I can just go through both. And yeah, I guess that will do. Or x in golden image dot width and I say that it's the attribute it's width, right? Yeah, width and height. The other other thing that I need to make sure is that it's using coordinate system, okay. Okay, zero zero to Okay, that's fine. Uh, it's a bit strange, but okay. For X in 
part line and then go over there. Oh wow, okay, now I just realized I can So I need to count where this is Pixel difference It's count. Why is it yellow? No, that's not what I. Ah, uh, sum. Okay, sorry. Sum of one if. I'll call this different pixels. One if golden image dot get pixel x y different from result image result image dot get pixel x y else zero or x in golden image quit or y in golden no, not for in no, in range golden image quit for y in range golden image dot height and total pixels is width by height and then return total pixel uh, different pixels by total pixel and this should give us where there is compare images and if I just write this as that test um, a1 and but a horrible naming scheme which I really don't like but never mind that part for now so it runs on paper dash v and then it gets a source here which gets an environment variable oh yeah So that at least gives it a little bit of a name to match with you. And it gets image source user one and the result of not one. So let's add another function then that run on paper and command line as a as a sequence of string. And it wants a process as well. And yes, I could run this as a sync test, but will make things nicer because this can be all run in parallel. But for now, let's just start with this. Um, complete the process. And what this needs to do is import less. I can do I can raise the volume. The mic is not one of the best, so let me know if this one is more audible. And welcome to the stream. I've been considering getting a decent mic for the work meetings, and I may put it on the switch so I can um, on the USB switch so I can switch it over for the live streams because yeah. Webcam microphones, not a great idea. Um, okay, so on paper, um, 
Flask of Best on paper binary. And the default is going to be on paper. It, it will try to run it from local thing if I, did, if I don't give it a particular binary. And then return, so process to run. And yeah, I can send info this one. You can just see the out and the R to the same, so run on paper. Um, run paper path plus cmp9 std out sys.std out stdr sys.stdr just go straight out and then from here I need the test directory. I'll just grab it as the NoSQL end as well. So uh, test directory. A bit of path. And that's going to be ironic. Yeah, no, but I need the path if the path are. Because I'm going to make a path out of it and then I'm going to just convert it to string to pass it to the command line. Anyway, one thing at a time. Um, return OS path. No. Return path take the path. OS okay. and test on paper. Uh, test, sorry, test. In Mages or C near, let's call it that way. That way, I may be able to move them away from the actual tests. Um, and the default for now is just going to be tests. So, test day one, run on paper. Actually, let me do, 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 do what do I want to do with this. This run result is run on paper. Oh, and I need to know. Do I need to know what where I'm going to output it? Yes, I do need to know where to output it. Get images or C directory. And this one goes over here. Get output directory test output there. This is going to be dot going to be a bit of a mess at first but I'm going to clean it up afterwards I'm going for the I want something to see that it works and then I can apply all of the stuff to everything else and so the thing, I don't need to give it on paper because it will do the right thing there and my command line and I think all of these use dash v yeah to make sure that it actually writes some of these have an explicit overwrite Which is also going to be interesting because that means I need to make sure I create the files so that it does the overwriting. But let, let's just take one bit of time. Um, all of this was a bit of a mess, so let me just add on paper path plus uh, sorry dash p because that one will always be there. Run on paper and uh, this just doesn't get any particular stuff. It just needs to find the input and the output. So then. run on paper and the command line is going to be get string of get mgsrc directory slash mgsrc one.png and the output is going to be get output directory There's also one. Like that, I'll keep the same name, but that's going to be 
actually I need this one to oh, let me just split this I like I said this is going to be very rumbling because I'm just building it as I go and I'm not sure myself what I want so in source path is get emgsrc directory emgsrc is user one png result result path is going to be get output directory results a one dot ppm I'm probably going to change that later and this is going to be literally the same for now but I'm just going to add it for symmetry reasons and it's going to be get golden directory which is going to be well pretty much the same but I may split them later so let me just make sure they're all there and golden path is get golden directory and the golden I want of this one is also going to be golden a1 I think yes golden a1.pdm golden a1.pdm Results? No, result. I don't know why I called it results before, but let me call it result now. Yeah, it was results there. Okay. Result and golden are the same length, so it looks a little bit more symmetric that way. Okay, so random paper becomes string source path followed by string result path. And then if run result dot no actually assert result dot um the result code? No, return value or return code. Yes. As I start with return code zero. Um but maybe I think it's Pylance that is doing this. This is straight out of the code from VS Code. Well, that's the lovely part. Um, sorry, um, Ialchix is asking if there is a plugin that makes the unused variables gray. I'll admit this one doesn't work at work. So this is probably on the VS Code stuff that is only on the public versions for now, I guess. Um, I think we, we are not using it, but it works great. I've used it a few times and it does make quite a difference to just remember like, oh yeah, I'm um, sorry, I'm not actually using that variable anyway, I can, anywhere I can just delete it. Um, it's fairly recent, maybe January update or February update. Um, the VS Code Python support is just astoundingly great. I, I stopped using Emacs for Python. Like, there is no point in me using Emacs for Python. It's way too complicated. It, like, trying to get the good Python set up in Emacs, I'm not saying that it's impossible. You can do it, I'm sure. But it's the same thing as things like um, org tool. And like, yes, you go, like, uh, org mod. You can do whatever you want with it. But you need to program your way around it. And like, I don't care. Not, I don't care enough to set up all of that all the time or learn all of the things in which it can change please give me an editor that works out of the box most of the time VS Code is bad um, I do need, as I said earlier, I need to change every time the, the mode because dark mode for me doesn't work but I can copy paste my settings between systems or have them sync and I don't care anymore about that either so yeah, I'm happy with that, with that part Very. Okay, so, uh, but the source of the dorm code is the same, and then I have the compare image here, and then I want to have... Oh, mm. top, top, top. There we go. I also know it's a mistype there. And now, um, assert compare images golden result. Uh, is less than 0.05 and we will we'll assert that it is less than 5% difference they should be exactly the same but they may be slightly different let's accept 0.05 difference so this should kind of work um, let me set the view environment variable and also while I'm at it pip install 
user upgrade black just in case because I want black installed. Yeah, it's already installed. So export test image source here is going to be pwd tests export golden is going to be exactly the same test output there is going to be build here just make all the mess fire I can clean it up more easily and then I need test on paper binary which is going to be the unpaper one that I just built so we can now oh it installed by test so if I run pytest uh, it doesn't run any tests pytest tests uh, unpaper tests better uh, okay it's not get child it's logging dot get logger sorry Okay, that's a bit. It's a bit better. Uh, run and paper command line. Okay, this. Otherwise, it's a bit of a mess to run. So, command line is going to be all of the parameters together. And I also realized that I didn't pass the golden path. So, golden equal result equal. Because that's the way it should be. And we format it. While I'm at it, let me just add the thing here. 2021. Uh, I was using two licenses for some things. I do want to double license this one. Yeah, MIT. As in anybody can take this one and use it for something different there is no re real reason for this to be like it's yes it's distributed together all the things with as gpl2 anybody wants to take any of this they can take all of this there is nothing important in this test it makes no sense to have only the limit one okay type error can only concatenate at least not double to list and that's fine because i need the list here there we go better and it's running it supposedly so the good news is it actually did the right thing like it ran the std out and it the good the reason why i wanted uh pytest for this in particular is because i know that it does the std out stdr capturing which makes things so much easier to write than the previous stuff that i had awesome um i love this random stdr here but like you need to use the codec power and like i have no idea what it is about but okay i'll change it later um and there should be no pts because it's a freaking image but never mind. Um, but it fails at using the PL. So from import PL dot image, I guess. Yeah, that should do the trick. And the output file already present, and that's not unexpected. Uh, I should probably randomize what number, but the name, but let's start with a thing at a time at this case. Build there, and then it's going to be results anyone. No? Oh, build. Build there results anyone. I see if it works. Collected one item. Get pixel text two position arguments for three given. And it is this one. Three given. Oh I know why, right?
Yeah, I get pixel takes a double. No, so okay. Okay, clearly I need to make sure I remove that. Um, but probably for this. Fast lead. This is also just a reminder that it doesn't really matter how long you've been using a language or a library, you will find yourself going back just to remember what's the right thing to call for this. And also, you probably want to do that with Pathlib for a very simple reason. Let me give you an example of something that really happened to me not even a couple of months ago. I will say it was December, holiday break I think it was. I was changing something at work that used Pathlib and I want no, that should have used Pathlib and wasn't. So I was like, like, sure, let me just go and like do a little bit of this. And you can see that Pathlib has a lot of support for different things with paths and it has a lot of explanation on how they all derive together. None of that is relevant to what I'm talking about. But there is one thing over here. So the, it has the as URI, if you need URIs, which is Extremely cool, right? Um, relative to with name, with stem, those are also home, like really nice when you are changing paths around or generating stuff. All of that, lovely. Um, Windows path project path start ch mod exists. Expand user is there is some link. Do, 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 do. Where is the one I want? There you go. Path red link. Return the path to which the symbolic link points, as returned by OS read, read link. Now, if you look at the OS read link, it's a very standard thing, and this has been introduced so long ago, but I have no idea. But most importantly, from version 3.6, it takes a path-like object. And in 3.8, it also accepts one on Windows, um, not just on Unix. This thing has been here forever, I think, like from Python 2 at least. Pathlib got introduced 3.4, I think. Um, and you can see that things like read bytes was introduced in version 3.5. But read link was introduced in 3.9. And I like. I'm sure I can just use read link on this path, right? Like, clearly one of the fundamental of the OS module. Easy. Yeah, we are still running on 3.7. I'm like, okay, I'll just update to 3.8. Clearly just missing in 3.7. I know that a bunch of things were introduced in 3.8. Yeah, no, this one has been introduced in 3.9 and we were not at the time using 3.9 yet. Um, so since I'm writing this targeting 3.7, for the simple reason, but that's what I have on this Ubuntu here. Like there is no other reason why I'm targeting 3.7. For other stuff, I've been targeting 3.8, 3.9. I don't care. Like if I'm running it myself, it's mostly for myself, and I just happen to share it with, with, with the world. I don't care which version of Python I'm using. I will use the la last one I have available across my machines. Um, if somebody tells me that it doesn't work on one of the older versions and they want to send me a pull request, I'll take it. But for this one, I need to run it on um, integration. So I really do want to have a version that will run on Ubuntu. So 3.7 will do. So this is 3.7 and I want to remove, yeah, it's unlink the one I want probably. Um, so the problem with unlink is that it doesn't have an unlink if it exists and otherwise ignore it. So it's going to be annoying. As I said, I will randomize the names later because they really do need to get randomized, but that's a different problem. Or I could randomize it now. Uh, okay, let me... Py test. API reference. Functions. Pictures. It's a temp path, but I don't think, yeah, this returning deck is unique to each test. 
of a base temporary directory. I guess I could use these. I guess I can for the output at least. Okay, time pass. And I think that's uh, I don't be it's temp path is over here, right? Or is it in uh, fixture fixture I guess? No? Let me check the tutorial. Is it just... Oh! Mm. Do I need to just define it that way? Yeah, okay, I just need to provide it. That's the one part where I'm a bit annoyed generally by PyTest and the magic happening behind the scene because this is what I need. So TMP path there and then instead of get output directory this just becomes TMP path. And that's going to be unique across each run. And I probably want to log it, or maybe it will. Oh, let's see. It's running. So it's an improvement from what I had before I started the stream. And it passed! Okay, so this is a good starting point because it gives me think, where things are. Um, now the other thing is these two things here should be fixtures, so I just pass them on the command line. And I think if I BBB this one, it should tell me... I think there was a way to give it the name of a test. The good thing is that at least it works, the basic part it works. Yeah, no, just it says past. It doesn't tell me what the test was, it doesn't give me anything useful by it. But that part is annoying, I do want that to actually give me some feedback like testing this with this configuration. But Again, one thing at a time, I guess. Um, Start with this. Oh, and just 
so sieht bar. Golden bar. No, not golden bar, but um, golden SOC path or golden deer path, that's what it would weigh, golden deer path, can be path. So that becomes pytest.fixture name mgsoc path, and this one is pytest.fixture name golden deer path. That means I need to import PyTest as well. And then I'm going to add one more for A2, so, or sorry, B1. And as I said, I need to provide them with a better name. going to do at least has a slightly more complicated input file because it has two files input only one output for so source source one path is mgsrc 003 and 004 png so mgsrc path mgsrc 003 what happened to 002? Oh, probably it was something else. And source 2 path is mgsrc mgsrc 4 mg. And then result path is simply path results b1 to bpm. Run result is run on paper. And it's going to be dash n input pages two uh oh, two going to be string source one path string source two path and string result path. I'm going to be assert the thing. Actually, I guess I can run that. I uh, know oh because some of these are x fail. Oh, well, I can mark the x fail. No, probably better this way. I'm, I don't know, I'm a bit on the end. And golden deer, golden path is going to be golden deer path. Golden B one. And well, this one runs. What's the next? A one pass. Good. The other thing that would be very nice would be to have this running in parallel, but as I said for now, let me just make this work. So A1 and B1, that's a thing. Um, that helps. So like B1, B2 is going to be about the same. Like this is literally the same no processing there. They just change what the input is and which golden is. Combined color and gray, combined color and black and white. So 
yeah but would be nice to have it better because this is a lot of them that was B2 and that's B3 that's the same B1, B2, B3 they're pretty much the same they only change which version they are doing for the combination C1, C2, C3 are completely different the only difference is the sheet size D1, D2, D3 are fitting you, like the naming is not mine the naming is the stuff that comes from before and you can see that this one does multiple comparing images because it has multiple images to compare at the same time this will probably work very well as a a sync kind of thing like run all of these asynchronously and, and run all of, tie all of them together but I'm not going to bother with that just yet um, yeah like I'll just do it simple because it's too much of a pain otherwise um, these by the way like this path over here this percent expansion is not a formatting operation it's actually what unpaper takes as a template and then passes that straight to a uh, nsprintf, I think. I think, I don't remember actually. It's horrible and it should not be allowed. But that's the way it is for now. That's going to be for another time to fix. But okay, so um, yeah, b1, b2, and so on. We can. Like, we, B2, B3, they're all the same, so there is no difference here. The main difference on the, between the A series and the B series was these multiple inputs. So let's try a C1 instead then. I'll do one for each of these and then I'll see where the rest goes. Um, I probably also will have to check... One of these is an X fail, as in expected fail, and I forgot which one it is, which is annoying. Uh, do, 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 tests. X fail test is G3. G3 is supposed to fail. And okay, because it's trying to, like, it, it needs to know that the file is already there. So that's the other thing of doing the temp path there and having all of these on a separate path is that I don't have to bother with removing the file if the file is already there. I need to create it if I wanted that. Which is generally for tests a much better situation to be in. You want your test to write to an output directory that is empty and that is different from each run because otherwise your second run will depend on the first run. And that's just not something you want to do. But also means that this should not be called result A1, result B1. It should just be result. Um, but for now, I'm going to keep it that way because each test should also get a different path. So I could reasonably call all of them. Um, let me do, we said C1. Let's test C1. And of course, the other thing is all of this should probably be in separate files instead of a single huge like Python test. And it should like test, no processing with all the combined stuff and then one library with all the things. But as I said, let's take things slow. Um, and I should probably type all the path later. I'll apply the types later. So test C1 and it takes the same fixtures. And this is C1 black sheet background color. And it's going to run result run on paper. Um, I could pass check it went through to be honest. On all of these except for one. Let me. That makes more sense. Generally, that makes more sense. Like, 
yes, I do want to explicit like right now. There are no error condition checks because I think that that thing was painful, um, and I don't want to continue having it that painful. I do want to update the way this works overall. Um, the run function takes a um, check parameter which just raises if I'm like if I don't need this but the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do this I'm going to add it as a parameter there and check is going to be equal check that way I can pass it later for G1 and say yeah actually do pass that one too um, that's the other annoying part of the format there because these two things are now separate but that's intentional so I'll keep that it makes sense the way it is C1 okay so and, and oh yeah and I can remove the search now and I can remove the run result altogether PyTest does the right thing when the, the thing raises it will actually do the right thing of printing STD out and STDR so one less problem for me to deal with. Uh, what are my sources? My sources are SRC002. There you go, that's what it meant. Um, source path. And my result path is going to be. the extension is actually important and that's another thing that on paper is very annoying with depending on the extension you give it it will default to the different types of pnm files like whether you want the grayscale or the color i don't like that part but like one thing at a time i guess golden path is golden deal path um and this one is results c1 no golden c1 And, and this is going to be run on paper and I want dash n sheet size a4 sheet background black string mgss yes string and there's a and then assert, compare images, golden, golden path, result equal, result path. Again, these are split. That's another problem. Let's wait for it to run. Okay, the third one failed because I gave it the wrong path. Well, at least it works. Like that's another thing that should be tested. Like, is the directory is not something that is tested anywhere. Uh, yeah, source path. Um, not the image image source path. Source path. Passed. Yay! 
Okay, so C1 is high and it's going to be pretty much the same, it's just a bunch of the one input, like maybe one or more input, so I can generally size this a bit, right? Because I want to, would be nice to have it slightly more generic. Uh, fixtures only apply to tests, if I remember correctly, so I cannot do it that way, but I can probably just... Yeah, that's the annoying part. Like, if I pass it as fixtures there, like... That's annoying. Um... I can have one or more, more sources and I have a bunch of parameters. Yeah, no, let's not try to make this too. Let's start D1. Okay, D1 is also fairly boring in the sense of it's take this parameter, get that input, like the one with one source and one output, it's the easiest one because you just put a bunch of parameters there and you're done. Um, I wanted to see how this works, okay, there you go, E1, which has a split. Now this is going to be more interesting to write the test for. And I want to have the same as before. And now I need oh, the comment there of what this does. Top, 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 top. And again, like not having to do this silly stuff of looping to delete a bunch of files. Also, why on earth is this doing a for to remove it instead of a single? Don't ask. A lot of this was it worked. Let me not touch it again. So, um, the source file gets formatted so it doesn't actually have a full path, but source path is going to be image source path, and then it's going to actually have this e percent 0 3 d like, That's not going to be formatted, that's intended to stay that way. And then the result path is this thing over here. And then the results, well, no, actually, I cannot count the results yet because I need to generate them first and I need to have a globe. Uh, and then I'm going to run on paper the three, oh, the three is already present, so layout, double, output pages, to string source path, string result path, and that's going to be the annoying one because um, It means like A, this was not counting any of the how do you even explain what's going on here? Like it's so screwed up that hmm. This thing generates six outputs. There is nothing right now in this test, in the original test, that checks that there are exactly six outputs there. Because it can't. It's just comparing the six inputs and the six outputs. If some paper was generating 12 outputs because I made a mistake, it will not be catching that. Which makes it very interesting. The other problem with that is that the comparable image, the, the 
the golden and the result relationship is you change the base name but not the number which yeah that doesn't work quite as well and i think i can change this to a dot and hope that it works but it's also not going to work because the suffix stays there oh gosh okay let's make these that's why i wanted to do one for each group first because they are all different they're going to all have slightly different issues anyway let's try all results is tmp uh, path dot lob results results e1 star dot pdm And that returns me, the blob should return me a yield. So I need to actually sort this. Sort it. Sort it. Asset plan, all results, six. Like we want exactly six files in the output. And then for result in all results. I want to take the number at the end of it, so I'm going to do the result index is going to be I actually also want to make sure that they match not just the, the golden, I want them to match the the format. Uh, actually, no, but checking the form because if the format was wrong, uh, let's let's play it safe. So, import array, yes. I need to import regular expression to check a file. Yes, I know that sounds silly, but anyway. Um, assert read dot match results e1 star and then it's going to be zero nine it's not backslash d here because it's not unicorns the unicode numbers what i'm looking for i'm looking zero to nine and then looking for exactly this so that's going to be what i'm looking for in string result Actually, I can do this with a rematch instead of wasting it. So let me wrap that part over there. So name match is bad. Asset name match. And then I want to golden file, golden path is going to be golden deal path and then the, the second part is going to be golden e1 oh wait it's three or two so it's three oh three on the source and two on the output i got myself confused there uh, okay golden e1 golden e1 dash and then I'm putting the same as the input, so that's going to be name match group one dot pdm. And then I would like to check all four at once, but let me do one at a time. Like assert. Compare images golden equal golden path result equal result less than zero point zero five. See if this even works. Do 
du, 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 du. I should be writing a blog post com generally um, complaining about the mixing up of CI, CD, CT and so on because they're helping quite a few of those mix-ups. The whole thing with Python cryptography lately shows just how much the like, mess of using the same words to mean different things is causing to the world. These tests are not meant to test, well, they kind of do test, but FFmpeg didn't change the formats in such a way that on paper cannot deal with it. Oh, I forgot an R there, damn it. But more importantly, they are meant to test that I'm act but, mm. We need to test both. Oh, answer. Mm. Oh, because the, the thing was missing. Um, we need to test both, and that's important. But also, they are meant for me to, to stop me from getting something wrong as I go along. Like, if I make a change that breaks the output. I need to know, and then separately I need to know if FM, FFmpeg changes something on their side. My continuous integration of my own code, my before I submit this, doesn't change the version of FFmpeg every time I run it. It doesn't update it. Like if my system still has an old version, I will be developing against that one, and I will only know about that one. The integration test is step number two, and like once I know that at least with the version I'm developing with, everything works fine, I can go and make sure that this works fine with different operating systems, different version of FFmpeg, different versions of Python. All of those things are important. But that's not the only thing. Uh, OSTR, yeah, that result dot base name. I think it's just base name, or is it just, is it name or base name, I never remember. Um, blob, expand user, is socket, da -da 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 too many attributes. But parts, I don't care. Name, that's what I want. Yeah, that should do the right thing. And yes, like, local testing and integration testing are two separate levels. They are both needed. You can't replace one with the other. Um, unit testing should go. Unit testing should go in a completely different way. Um, because like, if. Mm, there are lots of things that can break in on paper the way it is written, and unit testing will include testing the internals of it. So given an already loaded file with known content, I need to know what the output is going to be of a certain function, of a single certain function, and not of the whole pipe, not even pipe, the whole processing of this. Right now, it's a whole processing of it, and like, eh, yeah, that's not going to, like, mm -hmm. it gives me a bit of a funny feeling. Like, a lot of this is testing the parsing of the parameters, for instance. Um, and as I wrote on um, the blog, did I write on what? Did I write that one on the blog? I don't remember, or rather. I know that I wrote it. The question is, did I actually release that blog post? Um, that's it, did it? And I know I'm not showing my browser because I'm still running the test. So when the test passes or fails, we'll let it go. 
yeah, okay. I did release that, that blog post and I'll get, hey, it passes. So now I can go back to browsing so I can show the blog post. So this is a blog post that I wrote last month. Well, I wrote it in December, I think, but I posted last month and it is about the plan of replacing Unpaper. Well, not replacing Unpaper, but replacing the Unpaper interface so that you can control Unpaper with a JSON job description document object instead of using the silly command line parameters because and let me now go back to coding uh, let me just show you like just how complicated it is uh, oh it doesn't actually do that so I forgot that I removed it from there These, these are the command line parameters. And you can see that some of these I still have bugs in the thing I need to fix. But beside that, yeah, they are complicated. They're just overly complicated. Um, if you look at the, I think it's first, see what does the thing. Yeah, this is the command line parser. Like it has paper sizes here. No, it does not use um, lib paper size or whatever the name of the library is. I just have a bunch of like, yeah, that's the thing expressed in centimeters. Actually, no, this, the whole measurement here counts in inches, which drives me insane. Um, because, yeah, I, I, I could file myself a bug of like, yeah, we should migrate this to be in millimeters and stop bothering with inches. Like, if anybody wants to do this in inches, they can, but don't care. Um, but then you go, like, string processing in C. <laughs> um, compare directions, like, there is, like, this is the kind of thing that it's just a string method in Python and it will be so much easier. But maybe Python for the actual command line may not work. I'm not sure of that. Like it will be an additional dependencies of stuff. But even just migrating all of this stuff to be one binary that just processes this and returns a JSON object with a description of what to do will make it so much easier. Um, but just parsing a bunch, like parse multi-index parse is in multi-index. It tells you whether a certain number is in a, it's essentially a set. Like all of that is a set and it should, no. Um, and paper.c that does, these are all the parameters. Yes, they are all globals. They're all globals are like, not stat they're static by process they're not static by unit but they're all globals and it's just as awful as you can imagine and there are many multi-indexes because yes that's a data structure not optimized so yeah i would argue that possibly some of these could be written in modern decent c plus plus rather than c just for the sake of having data structures so that can be separately unit tested. Um, all of these are output, yeah, all of these. And, and these are the long options. And yes, this, this part here, the number is maintained by hand. So if I made a mistake there, I'm screwed. <laughs> there is no aliasing, there is no generation of any of that. As I said, all of this stuff and then it uses get up long. Get, get up long only. It's awful, it's seriously awful. And you can see that some of these are aliased manually to something else. And then it just goes through the case from each one of them. It's scary. Like the command line parsing in one paper is scary and then I tried to improve on the one that was there before, but believe me, it's still horrible. Um, 
and most of it doesn't support like different ways of providing parameters all of this should be a job description in JSON and that will have saved a lot more time but that's not the way it is right now so let's go back to our test we know that E1 works now uh, go back to F1 now F1 merging two pages layout into single page so this is reading multiple files and then it still has a multi result and shit one are that two different with output wildcard only what was the difference maybe it's two oh uh, with input and output wildcard so there we go like this is again the, the what i was something about earlier about these are not quite unit tests they're not quite integration test either this is checking the input output wildcard behavior and that's the part where Unpaper goes and you give it like, I want to look at this, at, at this wildcard of files here and I want to output it on this wildcard there. What these two tests do differently is only the command line changes. That's it. Like the only thing that changes is the command line parsing because the Layout double, input pages two, it doesn't really change anything. And somehow F1 passes end sheet one, and this one doesn't. But otherwise, they are literally the same. And the thing, the reason why it uses end sheet one, yeah, is because this is testing that end sheet one with this thing over here doesn't go and read more than one. But also, it's not testing that there is no result F12 being created. Because it's just saying, okay, assume that the file results F11 exists. Um, nothing stops it from creating it anyway. Yeah, I don't like it. I really don't. Let's do F1 then. And this is going to be pretty much the same as before, so it's going to get boring, I know. I'm happy to take questions if anybody has questions about this. But I guess there isn't really much to say. Uh, source path. Which source path do you want? Source path is just your path. And just use the e percent zero three d for PNG results is ah uh, the and golden path. Please go then dear past. And it's results. No, sorry, golden F11 PDM. And somehow the F1 is F11 F21 instead of being golden F1 1 and golden F2 1. Don't ask me. Let's say this is a mess and it needs to be cleaned up. So run on paper and sheet one layout double. Um, I also just noticed that this was put in the dash V after the end sheet one, which is yeah. If people think that just because somebody has been working on this thing for many years, they don't 
make mistakes. This is the exact opposite example of this has been written originally by somebody who already had a lot of experience. I picked it up and I had a fair amount of experience and still the end result now that I have even more experience is shit. Um, that's just the way it is. Okay, so this one gives me the thing that I want to get all results. And it's going to be TMT path, club, star. Did it start out something earlier? Yeah, okay. Um, results are found. I'm actually going to fix this one to at least output to a dash one. And I'm going to change this one to remove that thing because I want to make sure that it didn't create extra files with different things. I technically, it could be doing. Let's that, just do star. Just find everything under the temp path. It should not be writing anything under the temp path anyway. Instead of blob star. And now you can see my thought process a lot of times is like, yeah, that's the thing. But like, then I change my, my mind, like, oh, maybe I should do something just different with that. Um, either do. So, to, to, to instead of blob star, this is sorted TMP, TMP path, either do. There we go. Assert len all results equal one, and then asset all results zero is equal to TMP path comma results f one dash one dot pdm. So that will assume that we only generated one file and the file that with the name we want. And now what's the golden path? Uh, Let's call this output path instead of results path. And then I'm going to put result path is equal to MP path. Results F11. F11. PDM. And now I can go into assume that this is the same. And then I'm going to do the result thing here. Now, what else do I need to do with this before I make, before I run this? Because it's going to be a while. Well, one, one, you want to play, that's fine. Da, 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 da. Save. And yes, it's going to be a very long test by now. And that's why I need to parallelize this, because honestly, there are too many things to run otherwise. E1 will have to go through quite a few different files. And like, there are more of them as well. So yeah, if I get this working and I get it to a point where I can actually merge this into main or replace main with it, with this Mason branch, um, then I should be able, next step, to 
go ahead and look into splitting the um, okay one pass now it's f1 um, I want to uh, go ahead and split the command line parser and the part that actually does the execution by just saying hey all the execution will happen on a defined JSON binary um, the problem with that is I want to have a JSON schema that generates the data types so that I don't have to manually marshal and unmarshal it it's going to take me a while, hey it passed, that's good so this part worked um, and if I do that I will probably do that on stream next week as well okay this one works this was f1 let's say g1 and i know g3 is the one but okay g1 the g1 is are special because the g1 they don't actually need to care that much but the file is like i only need to care that this is less than infinite what i mean is these ones are actually a, this is no processing it's supposed to just like, do the same thing but this one is supposed to allow overwrite and if the file is not there just don't care and then this one is going to allow overwrite on a file that is there and then this one is the file is there don't allow overwrite expect it to fail so those three are interesting different cases and if I was using unit test rather than by test I will probably make them the same test method with three subtests and honestly I don't and these are the only ones that I added that were not there before and that's why they don't actually have a expected golden output to them this is just me testing that the command line and the, and the, the overwriting works. So, these ones, I'm going to not call them G1, G2, G3, I'm going to call them what they should have been called in the first place, because I know exactly what they should be testing. So, test, overwrite, no file, going to still get the same, all of that. Oh, that. and that's the source file is going to be image source is it doesn't really matter and also because of that I think this has three separate goldens But they're actually the same file. Yeah. Actually, G3 is different. Is G3 empty? G3 is empty. It just makes sure that the file is not there. So I, we are actually not going to care about G3 and I think I also want to check because I think A1 is a no processing as well no that's full processing combined co okay none of these is just the first image identical and but what should be like it should be the first image identical um, but in PDM format I think I can give like I will try to see if that works it might not I will see um, so this one will not need a, no it will need a golden deer will it need a golden deer? no it doesn't need a golden deer does it? probably won't need a golden deer um, that's a right no file source file is going to be emgsrc uh, emgsrc 001.png and then result file is going to be tmp path result .pm. and then run on paper and it is going to be 
no processing one because it says don't process page number one and string of source file string of result file should be path not path should it yeah source path Google path if you have never tried this before when you're using vs code with a default python integrations you can press f2 which is the same button for renaming files uh, to rename a variable i find the fact that it is the same rename very pleasing very nice i like it um, so now i can assert compare images between golden is going to be the source path and result is going to be result path uh, and this should be exactly zero cool test for this to be the I don't care if this should be exactly zero because it should be exactly the same file it should not be processing it whatsoever if it is processing we have a problem so let's see if something fails um, I like am not actually testing the processing at all but still test override existing file so what I'm going to test now is I'm going to keep everything exactly the same as before but I'm going to create the result path first Result path dot touch is just touch right yeah just in case exists okay or false because we keep, we hit that we are we, we screwed up the test and this oh and I forgot to pass overwrite oh no processing without overwrite and this if I G three that's the last one. Um, G1 was with override, so let me pass no process uh, override here. Okay, and I'm doing the same here. The compare image should be exactly the same because I'm overwriting an existing file. The file is already there, but it's going to be overwritten, so I'm not going to actually care about that. And then I'm going to test the last one, which is no overwrite existing file, where I'm not passing overwrite. And I'm also going to check equal false on this on paper. So on, uh, on paper result, and I'm going to assert that on paper result return code is not zero because I told it not to overwrite it. And I'm going to assert that the result path stat sp size is equal to zero instead. That means that the file was not touched, the file was not written to. And now I test. Also, while I'm doing while well, this is only the test, I'm going to create a poll on Twitter about whether I should release the next version of a paper with the Maison build system as version 7 or 6.3.
and Twitter. So if you have an opinion on whether this should 6.2 as it turns out, not 6.3, I was wrong on that one. If you have an opinion on whether this should be version 7 or version 6.2, please do let me know. And it failed. Uh, cold process error. Yes, let's. let's in yes. Which one did it fail? Test over write no file and test over write existing file. What did I. Six seg. Okay. We seem to have an issue. It's like faulted. Okay. Have to run it. While it runs, I will use the last 10 minutes of stream because I want to end around 7 ish. To once again thank TamTamD for the awesome job he did with my avatar over there. Which, if it wasn't obvious, it's Luxio. A variant of Luxio, at least that's his standard Luxio. Um, but drawn as me including the hair sticking out, those who have met me in person, which turns out to be not as many people as the people I work with nowadays, because I haven't met most of the people I work with. Funny, isn't it? Um, yeah, like, this is beautiful, like all of the, the, the whole... The whole work from Tantandi is absolutely stunning, I will say, and my wife had the excellent idea of surprising me for my birthday last year by getting a commissioning Tantandi for the avatar and get it printed. Um, and it's beautiful and it's in the living room, I still haven't put it on any wall because I'm not sure which wall it should go on. And also we've been having issues with the command strips in this apartment so yeah i've been avoiding putting too much stuff on the wall and yeah of course to continue i need to log in and i don't want to log in on this one um, let's go back for a moment to coding i uh, do i have a core file now yes i do have a core file so let me see gdb core um build dear on paper it may not And you've seen my local WSL password, so I will have to change it later. Um, why did it echo back? I have no idea. Thankfully, this is only a local password, and you cannot do anything with it. And also, WSL2 doesn't even support IPv6 anymore, so it's like, <laughs> who cares? Um, okay, that's GDB, yeah, that's fine. And it got the parameters wrong. GDB build the unpaper core. Okay, where did it crash? It crashed 
on parse multi index as scanf. Parse.c, so I, you see why I hate that code. On line 287. So here. I need that and, and paper that's it for twenty six. So what was it trying to parse at line four twenty six? It's N, which is no processor. And no processing, parses multi index, so that's the, it's, that's the format, and opt arg. That's interesting, I say it's kind of access memory at address, so opt arg is empty. But opt arg should not be empty when I'm passing that, should it? That dash n and it definitely takes a thing. Ah, required argument. No processing one. Oh, I think I know what to yeah, optarg is here, but the string it parses here is not optarg. What? Okay, so optarg is not null, that's fine. And even if it was, it wouldn't have handled it. Oh, it duplicates optarg here, as this one. And then. That's happened at 287. Okay, so frame 4 print index. Index, oh, I'm sorry, index is just set. So what's the other thing? Um, print multi index count 0. And that's the default. And the index is a seal lock. of for to chew so if I print mold no wait print as one so that's s one can can text this memory at address the dupe of it what? Optar is one. I don't have a process to debug, but fine. How can it not? Okay. I think I need to think this through a bit because these make no sense.
the optag is fine. This is where unit testing will be awesome, by the way, because this freaking function should be unit tested, and so I should just pass this parse multi index one and then a multi index structure, and I will be done with it. But I'm not. I guess I will take a look at this later. Okay, so ending this soon, I wanted to also remind, like, because of my getting ready picture when I start, um, don't miss our super adventure by Sir Gurley, who's the artist behind the pesto that you see mm, together with the coffee when I start the stream. Um, my plan is to have a different start splash for the screen next stream, whenever that's going to be, which is going to be probably me yelling at the command line parser, most likely. Um, so be ready for that. Um, but also, Yeah, I'm not sure what, if I'm going to manage it. I'm not sure when the stream is going to be. I do want to change the splash screen. Um, and because of that, I just wanted to have a shout out to Sarah and Steph as well, because their content is awesome. And Pesto is extremely cute. And I'm going to miss that splash. But I say, sometimes you need to change a little bit. So that's going to be for the next stream. And on this note, with not much progress made on the testing, um, I will say goodbye and see you next stream. Possibly in two weeks, who knows. Or maybe Monday, depending on how I feel on Monday, because I have Monday off. And this thing is going to annoy me for the next couple of days. Good night, everyone.